Welcome back to PyWatch YouTube. This is Bob Elderboss, and today I want to talk about the dictionary dispatch pattern, which is a really nice refactoring technique. So on my screen here is a long if elif elif else statement, and it's a bit contrived in the sense that there's not much um, code in ev every branch. But that's, um, you can already imagine if there will be more code in each branch, it would be kind of a mess. As the Zen of Python says, flat is better than nested. Uh, you can already see where this is going, right? You can quickly go to this uh, notorious arrow ship, which is really bad. So let's uh, try to refactor uh, this in this video and I will take various steps. So um, the first step will be to remove the to move the operations into functions. Then we're going to put uh, the functions in a dictionary, which is the actual dispatch pattern. And then lastly, we can also use the operator module to make it even nicer, right? So moving it into functions, um, I'm not going to write out all the code this time because I want this video to be concise and just focus on the explanations. So step one is to put the code of every branch into a function, right? So instead of doing a plus b inline, I now have a function, right? Instead of doing a minus b, I now have a function called subtract, right? So this is already more modular and every piece can be reused and tested in isolation. So if you can break things into more functions, immediately your code becomes more maintainable because you have more isolated units you can reuse and test in isolation right so the code for the rest is the same it um, matches the operation and if it's not at subtract multiply divide then we raise a value error i did not even run the previous version but um, it would surely also print 15 because we're adding 10 and 5 so you go into the function the third argument is the operation it matches add then it runs the add function which does a plus B, which is 10 plus five, and then returns the result, all right? So this is already a bit nicer, but we still have this if, elif, elif, else um, statement. So the next part of the refactoring is to put all the operations and functions in a dictionary. So dictionaries are nice. They're um, like language dictionaries in the sense that uh, you have a key and a value, right? You can look up a word, that's your key, and you can then retrieve the meaning of the word, which is the value, right? So here the keys are going to be the operations and the values are going to be the callables. And you say like, hey, can I just pass functions around in the dictionary? And yes, we can. Everything in Python is an object. So you can pass callables around as values of dictionaries, just as if you pass integers and strings around. So that's actually a very powerful concept. So here we're going to make an operations dictionary where we have add string, which is the operation, and it maps to the function add, right? And then we're going to copy this for uh, three times. The other is going to be subtract, and that's going to point to subtract. And then we have multiply, And that points to multiply callable or the function. And lastly, we have divide. And that points to the divide callable. End of the dictionary. And now what's really nice is this becomes much shorter. Uh, we can do a dictionary lookup. Well, we can do it straight away, but um, I still need to account for the fact that you might get a key error or that the operation is not a valid one. So first I would do if operation, so the operation passed into the function, is not in the operations dictionary, then I do my raise value error. That returns from the function, right? That raises a value error. So I could do either else if that doesn't happen but it can also return straight away because again, if this happens, it's the end of the function. So I can dedent and go straight at the outer level, uh, which means if the operation is in the um, operations dictionary, then this will never trigger a key error. 
and then I can, and this might um, need a little bit of explanation and let me also remove the code we effectively don't need anymore, which is a great refactoring. <laughs> so what happens here is we look up the operation value by the operation key. So here we get an add operation here can be add, subtract, multiply, divide. Um, you reach into the dictionary and find the matching function. So this part now returns a function and then we call the function. So again, it's a callable, right? So we can, we can call it by using the uh, parentheses and pass in the arguments. So this is very concise. And it also is a nice example again of everything in Python being an object and you being able to um, pass around callables that when you get a callable return from a dictionary, you can call it uh, with the parentheses. So again, if the operation is add, then operations add would um, return the add callable. And so this would be add, and then to call it, you pass in the arguments, right? And then you get uh, 15 in the example we saw earlier. So all that is wrapped up in this nice concise code, and that's all thanks to the dispatch pattern. Uh, let's actually see if this works. And that still prints 15. And of course, we should also test a little bit the other options. So subtract. Then you get five, multiply. Well, let's do mult because that's not in the dictionary. Then I should get a value error, right? On an operation. If I do the right one, multiply uh, 50, then the command, of course, is also not true anymore. 10 times five is 50 and divide uh, you should get two, right? Uh, that's interesting. Divide is a uh, float by default. And of course, there's no exception handling. So if you divide by zero, you get an uncaught zero division error. But again, this video is really for um, to highlight this refactoring or pattern, right? So that's awesome. That works well. Um, there's one final refactoring. Um, so this is all you need to know really for the dispense pattern. Again, these callables here would typically do more things. But as we're talking about adding, subtracting, multiplying, dividing in this video, we can even do better uh, by using the operator module. Um, also maybe to introduce a little bit of on the fly testing, we could even ha use the asserts here to quickly um, have a little bit of regression testing here. So multiply, I mean, you know, normally I would do this with PyTest, of course, but um, nothing stopping you from just quickly, you know, um, writing your search, your search at the end. So that was 15 and this was um, subtract and that should be five. So if there's no error, it all works. If I would have a failing test, so I would assume that this would be six, then you get an assertion error, right? So a nice way to write some on the fly testing. Uh, but again, normally I would do this in PyTest. Uh, okay, so we have some sort of regression testing going on now. Uh, what if we use operator? So we can actually use uh, operator.add. And it works kind of the same as this function here that um, yeah, it returns a callable and you just pass through the arguments, right? So I can replace all these with what the operator has to has to offer, which is operator sub, operator, I think it's mul, and operator diff, I think. Um, and then we don't even need the functions anymore because we're just leveraging the operator module. Oops, um, module operator has no attribute diff. Um, so this one is wrong. Let's quickly look at the API. Their operator and we have floor diff. Okay, so we have true diff and we have floor diff. 
So I think this would uh, return the float. Uh, let's quickly actually check that. Operator true diff six and two. That gives a float, and if you want a floor diff, oh, that's more to, uh, to do with rounding, I think. So this works the same for six and two. The only difference is float versus integer. What would happen if you have, yeah, exactly, uh, a not round number? Then true diff gives you 1.5, uh, the float, but the floor diff would basically round it down even if you have, um, let's say, 9 and 5, then true diff is again the float. But the floor diff, even if you would round 1.8, it would actually be 2. Floor diff rounds it down, right? So that's the difference. Anyway, and in our case, we definitely want to have true diff, so that's the one I need to use. So diff becomes true diff, and then it should work. Oh, I'm still having the breakpoint in there. I need to remove that. Run the code. And no assertion error, so it still works. But yeah, so in this case, just a little extra, I can use the operator module, and that will get rid of all these functions. But again, usually the functions have more stuff in them, and um, then this doesn't apply. The main takeaway about the, this video is that we can get rid of a long if, elif, elif, l statement by using a dictionary where we have a dispatch going on from the operation key to a lookup callable. Um, so maybe just show the previous version to make it a bit more clear if these were regular functions. So again, the keys of the dictionary are the operation lookup strings and the values are the callables. And they're all nicely wrapped in a dictionary. So what's great about that is, first of all, less indented code, less complexity in the function. But also now if I want to add an operation, I can do it in one place, I can do it in this dictionary, and that's way more maintainable and overall the code is more readable. So if I would have to sum it up, the dictionary dispatch pattern greatly enhances code readability by simplifying complex decision change. So again, if, elif, elif, else, and it offers a flexible and extensible structure for adding, modifying, or handling operations seamlessly. So again, having this all in a dictionary is way easier to read, but also way easier to maintain. Right, thanks for watching. I hope this was a helpful video. And if you want to see more on refactoring, uh, let me know in the comments below. And other than that, I'll see you in the next video.